You're broken down and tired Of living life on the merry-go-round And you can't find a fighter But I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out Move mountains We gon' walk it out and move And I rise up, I rise like the day I rise up, I rise unafraid I rise up, and I do it a thousand eight times again And I rise up, I like the waves I rise up, in spite of the ache I rise up, and I do it a thousand eight Please welcome Renee from Sydney. Very nice to meet you. How are you? Have a seat. What is that thing? And it's probably related to your pledge. What is your pledge? This time next year, I will be Australia's best ever baton twirler. Um, how do you become Australia's champion twirler? I'm going to the World Championships in August this year and I want to try to make top 20 in my freestyle section. What number are you now? I placed 35th at the last World Championships, so it's going to take a lot yeah. to get there. How long have you been baton twirling? Since I was eight. What's the, what's the first move you learn? Simple things like hand rolls and tossing it in the air and rolling it off your arm. It sounds very, very simple. It sounds like even a, a 40 <coughs> you know, a man could do it, don't you think? Yeah. Um, could we, could you demonstrate for us? Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so you have to talk me through it. How do I do it? Um, go like this with your, no, this one. And then go like this with this, your left arm. And then like roll it under and try to pop it off. Yeah, and pop. <laughs> Oh, hang on. <laughs> so, so you just roll, you're rolling from one to the other. Yeah, and then pop, pop it off. Yeah, and cat. Yeah. <laughs> Can leave the professionals do it. Yeah. Oh. Can you win with a simple trick like the one that I did? Sorry. What sort of trick do you need to do in order to win? Uh, there's things like my triple cartwheel. So that's when you toss the baton in the air and you do three cartwheels continuously and you catch it. And that will make me Australia's best. Ever? Ever, yeah. Ever, ever, ever? Yeah. <laughs> can you do that? Not at the moment. Because I can do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> And I'm prepared to show you this time next year. Okay. <laughs> what is it you're going to do this time next year? This time next year, I will be Australia's best ever baton twirler. All right, good start. Go okay, well. Thank you. Two. So remember, we want to try and get more revolution on all your tosses. I've probably done over 50 triple cartwheels today and I'm pretty exhausted right now. Push. Two. Three. Jenna just come all the way from Canada to work with me. She medaled at the World Championships when she was a twirler. See how many more you have in you. How bad do you want it? 
It is extremely difficult to break into that top level at the World Championships because there's so many incredible baton twirling athletes from all over the world. She has to really prove by doing that triple cartwheel, she belongs there. You sore today? A little bit. A little bit. I'm most worried about not completing any of my tricks and not performing the best that I can when I get out there on the floor at Worlds. I want to be in the top 20 so badly. I need to catch this trouble. A triple cartwheel baton twirl catch. Obviously I can do one, but could Renee master it to become the best Australian baton twirler ever? Come on over. That was an entrance, huh? Yeah. Feel good? Yeah. Did you conquer the triple cartwheel twirl? Yes, I did, Tom. Oh. Your pledge was to be the best baton twirler in Australia. Yes. Did that happen? So at the World Championships, I came 22nd. I caught my triple cartwheel, which is something that no Australian has ever done. And I came back to Australia and I won the 2018 National Championships in Australia. And I was the youngest person to ever achieve any of that. So that makes me Australia's best ever baton twirler. You're the best. <laughs> How good. Just getting ready for record, so we're recording. <laughs> I'm talking to Renee Edmonds and uh, she's a baton twirler. So we're going to just discuss a little bit about her sport, her journey and where she's come to and I guess where she's going. So uh, welcome, Renee. So what were uh, some of the, I guess, more recent comps uh, or events that you competed in and how'd you go with, uh, how'd you go with those recently? Um, so in January, I traveled to Canada um, to compete at Pan Pacific, um, Pan Pacific Cup, and I came seventh in my individual event. In my pairs event, we came tenth, and in our uh, Team Australia, we came fifth. Um, but I was the week before I was nursing an injury, so I just had uh, torn my hamstring tendon. So it was pretty tough competition. Like I had to pull back on a lot of things and. Um, you, you can't really change much. Like, I could, I could just tape it and do what I could, but... Um, and it was quite an experience because can in Canada it was winter, so there was snow everywhere, and it was minus 40 the week that we were there, so it was the coldest week of um, their winter. Um, so it was a hard competition, but it was a great experience as well. Yeah, so I guess what, what did you learn from, you know, that comp or some of the other comps that you've... Done, done as well like was there anything you really took a took away from competing like that kind of when you get to the comp all your physical prep is done like I couldn't do much about the training I've done previously or the injury or it, it was kind of a mental game when you get to the competition it's very like you can't change the position you're in physically you can't make your trick harder you know you've done all that you can so I kind of learned to you know implement some mental strategies right before 
the competition and during the competition because I felt that I was like the, the physical component I was a little bit out of my control. So it was a very mental game for me at that stage. What are some of the main benefits that you found to your training, whether it be strength training or training for your sport or other kinds of, like, what have been the, the biggest benefits that you've found from your training? Strength training, um, it kind of just makes you be able to perform the best you can. Like when you're in a competition, you have lots of outside pressure and other components. You've got judges, you've got an audience, you've got, you know, other competitors in your face. You've got all this other pressure and to go out on the floor and um, being able to complete your routine and not being tired and feeling good afterwards because of that strength training has probably been really beneficial and it, it helps you cope with all of those other components as well to know that you're physically strong and fit to get through that routine. Yeah. Have you found the, the sport or training for the sport has given you any sort of more personal benefits? Kind of helps you time manage. You kind of have to block your time evenly and um, it also has uh, connected me to a lot of amazing people and being given me the opportunity to travel to amazing places. Um, you know, we've been to Sweden, we've been to America, we've been to Canada, um, and you connect with a lot of um, teammates and friends you make over the years. Um, and yeah, I guess the mental thing as well is definitely a big thing. You can t you can pass that on to other aspects of your life. So you've got a bit of a team around you. Like, who have been your biggest supporters uh, through all of this? Um, my coach Jane has. She taught me when since I was little, and she's kind of brought me through the ranks. So she's been a big part of my life. Um, my family has been really supportive. Um, just in the last year, we've been in contact with um, Mark Nash and Dale Wyatt, which are two American coaches. And at the last World Championships, they had they had the junior that won the World Championships um, was their athlete, and they um, choreographed her routine. So to be in contact with them has been really great over the last year, and they've really kind of pushed me to the next uh, level. Um, but my family and my coaches have definitely been one of the biggest support systems throughout everything. So where to from here? Like what's the, the current step or the next step for uh, you? So uh, probably Worlds next year will be in Italy in 2021, um, in August next year. That's the probably a big goal and that's the last World Championships before they transition into a new kind of association and program um, in an attempt to get into the Olympics. Um, so that's going to be a big world championships next year. And then after I finish school, hopefully I finish school, um, uh, we'll be applying to a couple of colleges in America. And um, my dream would be to twirl in one of the big um, American colleges over there. Yeah, so getting yourself into a position where there's a, where it's potentially a bigger sport. Yes, for sure. Yeah, so um, any advice for others wanting to be in a similar position to yours? I think love what you do. You have to be enjoying what you're doing to be successful. Um, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. Um, set goals and it does take a lot of hard work but you kind of have to sacrifice things in order to get where you want to be. Surround yourself with like like-minded people and supportive people to get where you want to be and to achieve the goals that you uh, want to achieve. Yeah, awesome. That's a some pretty wise words. I think that's my wise, wise beyond your beyond your years. Just like to thank like Swasson uh, Fit Clinic for giving me opportunities to put myself out there and to benefit me in, as an athlete.